All right, what up guys? I did a video yesterday, about 45 minutes long, then found out when I was uploading it that it was on mute. Anyway, so I'll do it again. The S&P, this is for Friday, closed. Well, we closed in the high of day because if you think about it, we opened pre-market, you know, we opened, we were trading much lower in pre-market. We opened at this low and basically just the low was the open. And we're closing the high of day, so kind of bullish, and this is across all the markets. Although we didn't close above the last two days, right? So we still have a bit of resistance around this area, which makes sense because it is the descending line. So, and this is across the board uh, generally. So the markets are looking to break out of this descending line, at least in terms of the S&P. I remain bearish fundamentally, long-term macro, Technically, it's not bearish yet, but it will be once we start testing and especially breaking, especially closing below this ascending line. So that's my take on the S&P. I haven't changed my my, my opinion in the last few days, uh, despite the breakout following Powell's speech. And I thought Powell's speech was relatively hawkish, actually. I think the market is just uh, sort of interpreting it a bit too positively. If they think that, you know, rates will not go up as much or as long and that might be true but i think the damage is already done there's a delay and i think the the rates will stay high for quite some time enough time to take the markets all the way down to new lows nasdaq again same thing right so open at low of day closed near high of day still didn't take out its sort of resistance around here the last few days basically i'd call resistance around 294.5 obviously the yeah thursday's high of day would be resistance but the real resistance is this descending line i don't i don't see us get there because for us to get there the s p needs to break out you know one or two percentage moves and i think i just can't see the market doing it and if it does that will be resistance again so and on the way down i'm looking for a test and a break and a close below this ascending line to really mark the move down to here the um the last descending line so nasdaq being one of the weaker charts indices and i expect it to lead the way down also with crypto dow jones is the opposite it's the stronger of the the indices it's the more defensive dividend uh real industry let's say rather than tech speculative ones this one obviously is broken out of its ascending line some time ago reached its next resistance actually closed above it three times even the red candle so it's strong, it's strong. Um, you know, it's it's like the other th four indices. They're all, they're, they're all gonna follow each other, sort of influence each other. For me, I, I can't be, I mean, this is kind of bullish. It's not even that bullish. It's just gone all the way up without really retracing much. It's not bearish yet, technically. Obviously, fundamentally, macro-wise, it, it's for me, it's the whole situation is bearish. I'm looking for a break below this, and really below this area, 32,500, I think, would be a, a nice break below that would take us to this resistance point. Although actually, more like here. And then and then we go down. This gets, it's going to have quite a few support on the way up, on the way down, because it's taken out quite a few resistance. So first one is going to be around 32,500. Next one will be around 33,000. 250 and these are very very minor support zones next one will be this descending line so it depends on the time horizon so if we start breaking down here then it'll be you know this price range if we break if we touch it around here it'll be around this price range so the time horizon comes into play but let's say we break down below this which i ultimately think is going to happen then you know it's going to be it's going to be hard to call. I think it will count more on the other indices and where their support is. They can, they can sort of influence each other on the way down, obviously, just as they do on the way up. But whatever, I'm not going to look into it too much. I just, the Dow, I expect it to come down with everything else. Uh, the Russell is, well, likewise, right? So opened at low of day because it was trading lower pre-market, closed near high of day. The resistance is very clear. It's 189, I would say. Um you know, this sort of high here. And again, I'm looking for a break, breach, and a close below this ascending support for it to move on all the way down. A bit like the NASDAQ, this one, very weak. So you probably lead the way down. It's just one thing, though, is because 
as you head towards the Santa Claus rally, the holidays, volume might be light and that might favor the bulls. I believe historically it does. But either way, I don't see us going too far higher in the next two, three weeks, you know, December. Uh, and whatever happens, I think January reality kicks in. And then with volume, we just go lower. I think that's when the, the recession, the reality of it sort of really kicks in. So it de December might not see the biggest move down because of light trading. And I don't know, it's, it's very hard to call. But fundamentally, I mean, bearish. Technically, it's still going to break below the ascending lines. And you've also got this December Santa Claus rally that might delay the move down. So it, we might not really go far at all. We might not go anywhere. It might just be sideways for a while, you know, a bit higher, a bit lower, and basically nowhere special. The VIX, I mean, this is ridiculous. To me, it's a broken ETF. It's a screaming buy where it is. Uh, you know, if the market goes higher, it could even go low, obviously. But to me, this is just a buy. And it's at support, so, you know, what a buy, to be honest. But I wouldn't really play around with the VIX. There are better ways of playing the the move down on the markets, let's say. Um, so that's the main market. Let's move on to the interest rates. So interest rates, especially the shorter term, one year and two year, bit of sideways action. It did venture very high at some point on Friday, and that, that looked very strong, and that was very close to basically all all-time highs, let's say in this local area uh, so for me the one year will remain flagging high even if the market sort of goes higher and rates come lower i don't see the one year going too much lower because it's it's immediate term rates and rates will still go up right it's even in december it's gonna be a 50 basis points move up most likely that's not a pause that's not a move down in rates that's still a move up so for me the one year can't fall too much the two year it's a little similar, but obviously it has broken its sort of neckline support here on the head and shoulder, but it gets influenced very much by the one year. So if the one year starts to climb higher, you can expect this to to move up. Although it's very hard to reclaim a neckline like this. It's just broken down. So we might just basically go sideways on the two year, sideways even lower, I think. Um, you can see more of a spread between the one year and the two year. The five year, I mean, looks a lot more bearish than the one and two year. I see us going lower, basically, because that's what the chart says. I mean, that's a pretty ugly candle. It went much, it went higher than the the prior day, so Thursdays, but then closed lower. So that's kind of like an outside bearish engulfing. We've got several words you could use to describe this. I see it's going lower, especially after this candle. Ten year looks almost identical. I see it's going to the ascending line. For the 10 year, 10 years probably the most important yield. And uh, and basically bounce and go all, all the way back up with the markets going all the way back down. So I do see, and, and that's something that I'll say. So the 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 markets, I see them going maybe sideways up a little bit more and then all the way back down. Rates I see going sideways down and then all the way back up. And likewise, and let's just finish on the 30, same thing, although we're almost already at ascending. It could go a little lower if the 10 year drops a little lower, but then assume higher. But you can see we're basically at support for the 30 almost. But yeah, just to finish that thought. So markets up a little bit, sideways up, down, yields sideways down, up. And the dollar, which is following yields, likewise, sideways down and then up. And that's what this this descending line I think might become the most important one even though it's a small tactical one, it might become very important because as we move sideways down on the dollar, and I, I see 103 point, whatever you want to call this, as very, very light support, but this is the real support. Basically 101, it might even be a little below 101 in the 100s, it could dip below 100 being a psychological number. Basically sideways down and then bounce up. And then once we take out this descending line, so you can imagine we could sort of, you know, bounce down, bounce up, just fall down below before it even tests this uh this ascending one. Hit the ascending and then break out. And by then you can imagine that it would have tested this. And then obviously from from this 
level, whatever, you know, you know what I mean? Then bounce, sort of hit this and basically go all the way back up. So for me, this descending line will become very important as the dollar starts to bounce. And I think it will bounce ultimately from, from this ascending support, which I find quite cred credible. So that's the dollar. And to go with that, I mean, look, you've got the euro US dollar closing at the high of day, looking very bullish and looking like it wants to basically go all the way up back to 107. That uh, gives credence to the to DXY going low. So euro US dollar looks still bullish, very strong close there. US dollar Japanese yen looks still a bit bearish, looking for a little support here at 132. And the pound also a bit like the euro US dollar looking for that next level up to 1.26. So I think that's what will happen with the FXs, these three main ones. I'm not going to bother looking at the others. That will equate to dollar going lower, maybe not all the way to selling support. And then the reversal. Dollar goes up, all these other boys go down. Japanese yen going down against the dollar, that is. And then the rates also, they go down and then all the way back up. And the market up and then all the way back down. So that's the sort of pattern I'm looking for. I don't know how long it will take. Normally, I would say several trading days and then we're back into the new trend but with december being generally quite light i don't know how long it could take maybe it happens before the actual holidays because we're only the 4th of december i just don't know so i'll count on the charts that is the dollar let's move to gold and silver so gold and silver strong now look at silver first of all almost up two percent it was at some point whilst gold is red, that kind of divergence is very interesting. It's also pretty bullish. I mean, it's better if gold is green. But one thing I will say about gold is it did venture all the way down to 1780 and it closed near 1800. So this is kind of a hammer, even though it's red. And that's pretty bullish, even though it's red. It's also around resistance, obvious resistance, psychological and technical. So if the dollar and interest rates can keep drifting a little lower, we could see gold go up to a new level. The only problem for me is this level is quite hard to determine. For me, it's between 1840. I don't know if I should draw this. I might ruin the chart a bit, but between 1840 and 1880, <laughs> sort of this range, it's just hard to call. I think you'd have to zoom in on the one minute, watch the dollar, watch the rates, watch the market, watch silver. And then whichever one's leading, if there's a general resistance being formed on the one minute, I would just sort of drag and drop my cell around there. At least the first tranche for whatever I'm trading. Let's say it's the gold miners, gold and silver miners. And therefore, I'd have the GDX and GDXJ up also. Six or seven charts if we're venturing around here. And I would just wait for that first sign of, okay, we're topping up and I'd sell my first tranche. And if I'm wrong and it goes higher, good, next tranche. And I do three or four tranches and that'll be a, in total 10 15 percent sell of a particular gold stock or silver stock that's how i would do it get very tactical technical zoomed in detailed and with lots of supporting material that's how i would do it but for me this is the hardest range to trade so i'd have to count on several you know all that material but otherwise pretty simple here for me it's um 1800 is resistance but gold is you know still very strong Silver, however, is a lot stronger, which is bullish. A bit like, and I'll get to this later, the GDXJ being stronger than GDX. That's bullish, even though it's better to have them both green. Um, Yeah, resistance here. You can see this candle around here, 23, let's say 30. So that was probably, that's probably why it was resistance, but very, very bullish, you know, up 2%, close up 1.76%. I mean, for me, there's no obvious resistance for silver until this descending line, which is a very strong resistance. So uh, don't wait for it to get there to sell it. Sell it just before, you know. It depends how long it takes to get there. What if it takes three, four weeks? Then it's not going to be 25. It's going to be below. So you've got to always take that time component into consideration. I don't know if this level here, 24, will be a level... But I think at this point, every unit up becomes res resistance. So 20, um, 24, 25, although that's all there, all there is really until we're at the major resistance. But every sort of $1 up in silver becomes resistance. But we closed above 23. So let's see, let's see. Very strong. Got to also think about the support zones on the way down. But I'm looking for a major move down. So I wouldn't be buying this too early, even though it's it should be 
strong on the buy the dips i'm looking for a major move down although of course i would not be waiting for my first buy to be down here i think it's going to bounce a lot and aggressively before then so i would do something like this you know yes 22 should become very light support on the way down but i wouldn't bother i would just sort of make these two zones my buy comes down probably for a good reason market's collapsing i'd buy here and then hope for another move low and then buy there the 18 dollar zone is kind of gone train has left at that station unless you've got new lows coming in the markets which i do imagine will happen but i still think around here even if you lose this ascending support there'll be major strength here in in, in the buy but anyway no point in talking about that that's that's weeks away in my opinion Gold and silver is still strong, and it makes sense with the dollar going down, the market's going up. Let's move to GDX and GXJ, very similar to gold and silver. Been outperforming the market, uh, G, especially GXJ. Uh, GDX basically closed above that. Well, maybe not. It'd be better if we closed above 30, but very bullish. Next levels, I, I think I don't need to change anything here. It speaks for itself, the horizontal lines, the targets. Let's see. It's uh, I'm not really selling. I did nibble out a little bit. Uh, I'll get to that. I'll show my portfolio. I think there were three stocks I sold, nibbled out of not even the whole position. So, yeah, it speaks for itself, you know. Let's even get to 31, 33 might be a bit too much, even if the market and even if the dollar and yields come low, I find it very difficult. To see the miners getting there, I think that's 10% of a move up. That's too much for me. I think we might maybe get to 31 and then kind of reverse lower. Or unless we reverse straight away, of course. GDXJ, a bit stronger, right? It closed higher than Thursday. In fact, it's the highest close in a long time. Let's see if we can clear 38-ish. Uh, if we do trend a little higher, but for me... 40 should be major major resistance not because it's major major resistance it's just i can't imagine the the sector moving that high up because i think the markets will be going lower and the dollar will be bouncing by then and i don't i just don't see gold or the miners moving higher than 40 at all so i'll probably sell quite a lot again at 40 hoping for a nice move down to, to buy back so yeah i don't need to change these resistance lines let me go to the portfolio because I don't show it often. Uh, so gold looking, this is Barrett gold looking like um, GDX, which makes sense. It's it's basically one of the major ones that make up GDX. You know, it's uh, I, I basically, Barrett gold, I never held too much of, although I did nail the entry 13, 11 or something here. Never traded it. Or maybe I traded the smallest amount because of this crazy move up but really nibbled out once and left it. I haven't nibbled out again. I actually want more. So the only way I can see myself selling more is if we go to maybe 18, which wouldn't take too much. And again, if I see the miners just topping out there, again, I can't see them moving up too much higher, then I might gamble and sell like half of what I've got because it's not the strongest holding. Newmont, however, is... A heavy holding. I, I spoke about how I got in a bit too early at 52 with my first entry, and then I sort of doubled down on the drop on earnings. I think it was 48, and then went in again. 40, I think my average is like 47 or something. So I'm I'm actually a little, even though I nibbled out a tiny bit at 46, 49 on the way back up here. Yeah, so I, I never bought any on this drop after my last entry around here. And then when it started to move this crazy, when it started to do this crazy move, I sold a little 46, 49, thinking 46, 50 here would be resistance, which it kind of was, left it. And then I sold at 49, 57 on this move here because I thought this was resistance. I did nail basically almost the high. Uh, now I've left it. Again, it's a, my biggest holding by far. It's like double the next uh, heaviest holding. So... I'm looking to, I don't know whether to sell again. I'm sticking 49, 49. If we do move higher in case we fail, I might do that. I might nibble another 5, 10% out of 49, 49 if we keep going higher. And then start taking out more, a heavier chunk if we do venture higher. Because again, I feel like the miners will reverse soon and 
and I want Newmont to 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 ultimately be weighted the same as as the next top six or seven, which are these. So Newmont, you know, good move. I'm just looking to um, take advantage and and lighten and rebalance everything a bit more equally. Like Nico Eagle, very strong. These three are basically the best when it comes to the seniors, in my opinion. And good dividends too. So yeah, this horizontal line for sure. If it gets there, I've nibbled out a little bit on the way up. I've kept a decent amount, so it's it's always sort of worth the value. I think it should be worth and. This is um my holdings were their light mode at the moment, so I don't want to sell any more. If it gets all the way up here, it'll be worth a little bit more enough so that I can nibble look again a bit out, and then once I nibble out, it'll be worth what it's worth here. I do all those calculations. I have my Excel, so but yeah, Agnico Eagle also like GDX. They all look the same if you think about it. But Wheaton has been quite nice you can see how this ascending line normally i you know once you break below an ascending line you might as well delete it but it's valuable in case you return to the scene of the crime which it's done here and you can see how it touched it now if we venture higher and, and keep going i can start to delete this line this ascending support because then it becomes invalid irrelevant in my opinion but you can see how when a chart breaks down from this line it's still not worth deleting because if you go back up, it becomes resistant. A bit like any other, you know, even horizontal technical line. So I thought that would be nice to, to point out since I'm looking at it. Um, and since I'm at it, I have to delete this one and this one because that's invalid now. So yeah, Wheaton has made a nice move up. He also had some bad news. I remember down here, this candle here was looking very ugly. And I forgot if that was good news or it just decided to bounce and outperform the, the rest of the sector, but it's done a lot since. And um, yeah, it looks good, follows the GEX perfectly. So I think over here, 42 to 44, very strong resistance, if we even get there. Pan American Silver, this one it was the one that ended up suffering the most when it came to the buyout of Yamina. I did buy a bit more when all the sector was going up. And Pan America was basically going down because of the Yamina news. And that was a good thing because it's since really outperformed. And now it's looking very good, very good. It's closed at this resistance. I think if we do have a small move up in the minus, this thing could really continue its strength and go away. basically test 19 uh, and, and maybe even this gap fill zone. So Pan American Silver is completely, has been out underperforming the sector generally, but the last three days really outperforming and if there's any continuation uh, i'll be looking to sell because i actually added quite aggressively around here and i've nibbled a little bit out this is one of the ones i nibbled a little bit out of but uh not enough so i'm looking for that mag silver is another one i nibbled out of because it's kind of also done a bit of an outperforming uh move higher and i just find it difficult to imagine it getting to 18. it's a good stock uh, it should be one I buy on the dips, but I'm looking to be very greedy and try and nail a bit of a short term top. Grand Columbia, this one should be higher. This one should at least be above three, even though it's had a nice move from the lows. It should never have gotten that low. It should have moved higher already. So I'm looking to not sell any until basically 293. I think I got my sell in. Yamana, this is the, the pretty girl that everyone wants. We've had Nico Eagle, Pan American Silver, Goldfields all involved. This one I've been nibbling on the way out, or on the way up. To be honest, I think I might be all out by the time we before we touch six. So if we see a small move higher in the miners or Yamana, I think I'll close my position at six. Even though it's a beautiful mine, and if you look and you zoom out, it looks like it could really go higher. I just feel like the move is done, and it would be perfect timing. Close position. Just below six, five eighty nine maybe, which is very soon to be done on Monday, and hopefully the sector goes all the way down and I can buy it back. But by then it might merge. I think it will merge into Pan American Silver, which again I own a lot of now. So, or is it a Gnico Eagle? I think it was a Gnico Eagle and Pan America that was going to buy Yamana. I'm not too sure, but I own them all. Even Goldfields who pulled out of the of the um of the deal. So yeah, that's um. That's a good one there. Goldfields. This is one that's moved 
up a lot already. It's um well actually it's retraced a lot also. So I did sell this crazy move up. Uh, I bought and nibbled a little bit back here. Haven't touched it since. I, I I think I'll only sell it if it goes basically back up to around this zone, twelve fifty maybe twelve forty nine. I'd sell. But what I'm hoping for is yeah, as this indicates, I'm hoping for the whole sector to just crumble, and hopefully I can buy this back around nine. 901, 911, something like that. I always trade those odd numbers on the ladder and, and even lower if possible. But this is a, a great stock. Uh, I would just love to be lucky enough to buy it much lower. You can see where the market thinks it's worth, uh, thinks its value is if it doesn't purchase Yamana. So let's let's see if I'm lucky enough to buy this on the drop. Fortitude, this is a very strange one. I think it yields 8% dividends. I owned it from the very beginning of the spin-off with Goro. This was a really strange and worrying day at the beginning. The bid was, uh, yeah, it was, it was actually below this. and But there was no volume. I think I tried to sell it and I didn't even get filled. And thank God, because later I did in the three zone. I think I sold my first amount. And, and all the way up. And I started to buy it back very recently around this area. Uh, again, it's a very strange stock. I don't want to put too much in it. So the, by the way, now I'm at the more junior, um, let's call it medium miners. Um, although we're gonna get through the still ones. This is a strange one. So don't class I don't classify this as a senior at all. I've got about half of what I have in the others, except Newmont, which is just a monster. But yeah, this one I don't really want to go through it because it's very strange and very small amount allocated. So it's, yeah, it's a special one. Now, here we're looking at the four silver uh, rockets, I call them. So, actually, I don't call them that. I just call them that today. First Majestic, kind of expected more from First Majestic recently. I expect it to already be around 10, but it's not the case. It's one of the major silvers. Let's see if we can take out 10 and run, maybe to 11. At which point it'll also coincide with a major downtrend resistance. So I expect a lot of resistance here. I also don't expect the the, the miners to even get there. So if uh, First Majestic does move all the way up to here, I would be selling that again because for me it would it's just asking too much to break out of this and get all the way to to fourteen fifty, which is major resistance. Major. It's also prior support here. Hit it here. There. There. So. There's sort of two major resistance points. There's really this zone just under 11, and then all the way up here, 14 to 1450. But I'm not adding, there's no point in, in adding that sort of resistance yet because it's it's too far away. I don't think we'll ever get there. I mean, at least not now. So let's see. I haven't sold First Majestic because it hasn't moved up enough, but let's see if it gets there, then I'll nibble some. First Majestic, that has outperformed. Uh, it's probably been the strongest silver for all, uh, out of the, the top four. And it's it's broken out of what I think is resistance at the 3.80. Let's see if we can go all the way up here. Again, you know, 20% move, 17. That's asking a lot for a sector that I think will reverse lower soon. But let's see, you know, if, if the dollar and interest rates go down, like I've said, and the markets go sideways, we could have enough fuel for the GDX, GDX share to go up to 3% for one or two days. And you could see Fortuna really outperform and, and get, let's say, above four and run a little bit more. So, but again, these I've all sort of nibbled out where I have to. They're all worth a, a value that I'm happy with if they come down. And if Fortuna goes up 20%, I'll have enough the value that my Fortuna will, will be at. I can nibble out more. So, and that's the case throughout all of them. EXK has underperformed, as you can see, compared to First Majestic and Fortuna. This one, if if they moved, okay, if they move up, we can see resistance is here, just below four, so call it 3.85. Uh, if we move lower, support will be here, 310. But I think it will go there, maybe bounce a little bit, and then flush, and I would love that, because I like EXK, I'm a big fan. So this is really middle of the range, not doing anything. If we go here, it might sell a tiny bit. If we go there, it might buy a little bit. CDE is even weaker than that. 
it had bad earnings. It's one of my favorites. I absolutely love it. I think I remember uh, having bought it here. I think I did a video when it did this crazy move in, in, in about a week. And it's just monster move. So love it. Um, if there's enough strength, I, this one is weak. You feel it. You can see it in the chart. Resistance probably four makes sense. And then 440. I don't think it will get there. Even if the GEXs go up. A decent amount i just feel like it's 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 too weak it needs to go lower and i hope it does uh, and if it goes lower then you've got the support the ascending support also near the low basically it's a whole of the bear market so far so i look forward to that comes down here around three three ten flushes hits three flushes again and then 280 281 buy some more and then uh and it depends what the general market is doing but cd is the weakest of my four silver miners now i'm looking at the real juniors discovery silver is one of the new additions i was buying it around here i was actually buying it on the way up too something i rarely do but um yeah so this one's closed very high above one dollar for the first time in a while it's a shame that the sort of strength in the sector is fading because because it's no longer, I don't think it's got the strength to, to really get to this major descending line. So let's see. Discovery, um, I'm a big fan. It's one of my favorites of the silver juniors, especially probably the best. Trillium, this one is very special. It's just been bouncing around the sort of 20 zone, 20 to 15. I've been buying and selling, flipping it here with very light volume. It's been a nice way to make a couple hundred bucks, uh, but it's lacking the strength to really go to 25. Then we have Termalena. This one had a crazy squeeze all the way up here. The 30, I sold that. Let's come all the way back down. Um, I am not trading it right now because I sold what I had to, bought what I had to. And finally, Rain of Silver all the way here. Uh, yeah, I can see resistance all the way here. So let's see what happens after this. I think that'll do now for the... When am I doing this here? So I think I'll end it right here. Yeah, hope you enjoyed it. I'll forget crypto for now. All right, happy trading. See you tomorrow.